So um, welcome everyone. This is the second talk of the day. And we will be talking about suspects, as you already know in the introduction. Before that, we'll introduce ourselves a little bit and then we'll start with the talk. Yeah. So uh, Jyoti. Yeah, so hey everyone. Uh, I'm Jyoti and uh, I'm working with Equal Experts. Um, and I've been in the industry for more than six years. And being technical agnostic, I got a chance to work on multiple libraries and frameworks. And I always love to explore something new is going on. Um, so yeah, uh, so for the next 45 minutes, we will be here to talk about or the power of the suspense. Over to you, Gurma. Thank you. And a regular about me is uh, like Jyoti, right? I have been a developer, full stack developer. And I've been in the industry for uh, like close to seven now, close to seven years. Um, I have been working with React, React Native on the back and it's Node, GraphQL and Express. That's how the tech stack looks to me. Um, without wasting any time, let's start with the suspense part, okay? So the major focus for these 20 minutes will be the CSR part. And the next 20 minutes will be, uh, sorry, uh, first will be your client side rendering part. The second will be your server side rendering part with suspense. How does it behaves and all? Okay. Uh, before we start with suspense and few more things, uh, I would like to ask how many of you have any experience or have heard your suspense, pre-fetching, pre-loading, any hand raises? Okay. So first for suspense, anyone? Suspense? I will not ask you. <laughs> All right. Uh, suspense? Okay. I don't see any hand raises. All right. Uh, with pre-loading or pre-fetching? React? Reloading, pre-fetching, nothing? Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, let's first understand your suspense part. What is actually a suspense? In English, it's very simple. Okay, we are creating some, you know, melodrama and what is next? These kind of suspense, right? But in React, it's a bit different. It's actually a bit friendly, plus have some drawbacks, okay? So uh, for suspense, right? Suppose that you have your application where it's still loading, maybe fetching the data, maybe making your third-party API calls and something like that. Till that time, the component renders or maybe fetching the data from the back end or anything, we can have something called a fallback UI. As the name suggests, it means I can show the fallback UI until my component renders. All right. So how does this communicate with React? It's actually communicating with a kind of promise. So the promise says, hey, I'm being resolved correctly. Okay, I'm ready. Now the component renders. Until that time, your fallback UI will come into picture. That's particular simple definition for suspense. Now, how does it help a user or maybe how does it help as a developer, right? So first is uh, improve performance. Of course, it's improving your performance because multiple components, you cannot have your entire application in one component, right? It could be multiple components being nested, multiple routes and all. So suppose that you have something called a nested, nested, nested thingy, okay? And I am, as seen in the diagram, you can see there is something called a component which is uh, being, I would say, surrounded by a suspense boundary here, all right? A magic thing about suspense is any component uh, that is looking for a fallback here, or maybe about to render, goes to the closest suspense parent. You can have nested components. It goes to the closest suspense parent. Now, uh, till the time the component renders, we have a fallback UI. So the user says, okay, at least something is there for me, right? Maybe a loader. Though loader becomes a headache uh, later on that we'll talk about. Second is enhanced user experience. Then we have your closest parent for that. This is mainly a lame and simple language suspense, what it does, right? Any any questions or any other thing you feel like alien about suspense? No, right? It's right now it's clear. Yep. Any thumbs up? All clear about suspense? Okay. Lazy loading. So what is lazy? Lazy, it's like, okay, I'll, I'll do that later. You know, these kind of procrastinations we have as a human. So these kind of procrastinations being done into your, uh, I would say development as well. So let's say that in a React app, if it's a single page app, you load everything in one. That's okay, but it increases your bundle size, in increases the load on the network, increases a lot of performance issues. Right? Now, what does lazy loading says? It says, okay, if you need these three or four things at that point of initial load, I'll give it to you later on. I'll share it with you later. The moment you need it, I'll share it. So on request basis, it gets rendered or maybe shared, right? So that's called your lazy loading part. If you can see the conversation here, it's 
like somebody being lazy you need five i only give you five don't ask me more you didn't pay me for that right so that's kind of a lazy loading part as uh, i'll explain a few bit about lazy loading code splitting and there will be some something about prefetching so that we can understand the main focus area which is suspense based route for these uh, few 20 minutes okay so what is code splitting name is very simple you might have done it already so uh, one is saying i will give you everything in one request sounds very fascinating right oh i get everything in one go second says i'll give you one chunks one go is you have a lot of load okay your initial time increases because there are multiple multiple components or gs file or chunks being loaded right and if uh, for god's sake you have used lodash or some other you know um, high memory acquiring libraries it will then again increase your time exponentially second one says i will only fetch the initial or the required time things then again i'll go and you know make some few more calls as per the requirement as per the user journey and then we'll get it done right that's called code speed that's what we do for increase your performance now this is nothing but what i said earlier it's just written over there uh, just for if you want to have a read around so what is lazy, lazy loading advantages or maybe a code splitting process it increases uh, the performance faster loader times uh, reduced bundle size of course and so that it also have reduced load on your network cards uh, what is prefetch preloading and prefetch are uh, actually a bit similar but not that way so uh, prefetch is having a bit lower priority than the preload if it if it comes to execution i'll show you like how i'm saying why it's having a lower priority uh, with the preload part so what this diagram says, it's very simple right now. If you follow the numbers, right? One, two, three, four, what, what it says. First, it is fetching some pages. It could be a jQuery. It could be uh, maybe some data which I need to render next in the future. It could be anything, right? For for this example, it's example.com. Okay, it, it's been stored in some cache. Like, okay, I have it. I'll use it later whenever required. And then the moment the time comes, the moment you need that particular oh. thingy which you which you actually prefetched, it's in cache. I'll take it out from the cache and I'll use it. And everybody knows if it's coming from cache is faster, right? It's a very simple basic mechanism for cache. So that's a prefetch. So what did we cover now? We covered what is uh, suspense, right? What is lazy loading? And what is prefetch? Any doubts till, till now? We are clear with suspense. We are clear with prefetching, preloading, a very basic examples, right? Now, um, I can share my um, <laughs> a problem that we encountered in one of the projects. We were having a um, very big application, okay, which had a lot of lot of forms that needs to be filled up. And also the form has a sequence, like a user journey. You fill your first page, you fill your second page and third. And you can say that it was a kind of a micro front end thing. So, if you go and try to load everything in one go, of course, you'll have to sit for, I don't know how many minutes and then load the first page, all right? So that was not very beneficial part. So instead, uh, um, and also one thing, you remember I mentioned that there is a fallback UI that it renders for suspense. What is a fallback? If you don't have the component ready enough uh, right now, I'll just render a fallback, right? That seems nice. That seems a good user experience, but till till then if it's, uh, you know, bombarding you with a lot of loadings. So consider, like, imagine right now, you have one page, okay? You have multiple tabs, tab one, tab two, maybe any home page of any of the application where it says uh, home and X, Y, Z, and Y, Z. Consider every tab as a very high or very, uh, I would say, a bigger page to load, can be a micro app, can be a bigger module, anything. Um, all right. So now um, you understood the problem. I have a big app, multiple tabs. Every tab needs a lot of time to load, all right? Now the problem that came to us is with the fallback part or maybe with the loading that we acquired, we were having too many loaders in the application that we wanted to reduce, okay? There is something called a user journey, which a developer knows or maybe which any UX designer knows that if one user lands to one page, there are three or four possible ways he can go because that shows, right? Any tabs, any buttons. These are the user journey that it can opt for. 
Now, suppose if you know the future, maybe a slight possibility of the future that if a user comes to page A, page A could be a, itself, a, you know, a entire JS thingy. I can go to B, C, or D. What can I do to enhance it? I can at least preload some things of these A, B, C pages in advance to reduce the load time when it actually renders. Right. You, you're getting my point? So that was the entire thingy or the uh, problem. So we know the problem now, a lot of loaders and all that stuff. And yes, this, I really don't like that part. And that was all over the pages. So we came up, I, I can show you, I cannot show you the entire project thingy problem, but I have created some snippet around it, like to show you what was the actual problem we were facing. Um, I can play the video. You see one loader and then one loader inside these gray boxes to load these images. So I have put the network over 3G and I've uh, put the throttling over 3G and plus there is a disabled cache file. So you can see there were one page loader, the entire app loader, right? And there were loaders inside your gray part. Okay. In React or in any you know web development, you need to load your JS to actually run these things, right? You need to load your JS files or could be styling or could be anything. First, it needs to be loaded. And that also takes some time. We, we uh, keep that in mind, okay? Now, moving to the next part, let's say. I would like to have that animation. Huh? One so this was the problem for the fallback, okay? And what was the solution? Lazy routing. What is actually suspense-based routing or you can say lazy routing that came into picture. Ta-da, we are good with it. So, okay. Uh, this is a kind of snippet I'm going to show you in code runtime right now. It says that we have something called articles, okay? We have something called products, which we already see how it loads with a 3G kind of a network. And the third part is this books, okay? Now, if you are at home page, you have three potential user journeys. One is article, one is product, and one is your books. Why I kept that user journey in the beginning? So I have three potential ways to go to articles, products, and your books. All right. So as a user, uh, I can go to three, these three places. And as a developer, I know the user can go to these three places. So I can be a little smart and prefetch some of the required things in advance to load them with faster performance, with a faster time to render on the page. Correct? Make sense? All right. So. This is the user journey, potential user journey from the home page. Okay. I have done a few things to actually uh, uh, make it easy to understand how article books and products are dealing with that prefetching, preloading, or doing nothing at all. How does it look like on that one? So if you see that article part, I am doing preloading on hover. The moment I hover on the article, it gets preloaded. So it, it's simple, right? You cannot click until you get on that particular text. You have to go to that text. So it's like a kind of hover action. The moment you hover, I load the things and then I show them. Before clicking, there is an action called hover, right? You have to hover on that particular text. Second, for the books, I load it when the home page loads. So when I am on the home page already, I load the things which is being required for books. Okay. And the third part is I do not do anything for products. And that's how I can show you what was the actual problem with the loader part. So that's a problem area. Other two are the possible solutions that we can do. A preloading, prefetching can be done in few ways. Maybe you can have, uh, while the page rend uh, renders, like it's a loading part, like your books. I, uh, uh, I prefetch already the required things for books, the time my home page renders. Another thing could be conditional prefetching or preloading, which I said that or maybe action on based of some action, you can do that. So action was over and you load your things. Okay. Some conditional thing would be, hey, if this condition is true, just load me these advanced things. Uh, load me these things in advance. Um, like I gave you the form example. If you're filling your form on page one, page two, page three, the moment I am on page one, it's a condition. I would like to load or preload some things of page two. That's a conditional preloading part, right? All right. So I can now go to my code and show you some things. I'll put my mic down, okay, and... I believe it's visible or I, uh, I can zoom in uh, the network part. 
Zoom in will be fine, right? Or it's visible? Zoom in, back side, right? All right. How can I zoom in network wide? I don't know. Click on that and command plus. Cool. Uh, that's enough. Okay. And now it's over. Bottom. This is my home page. Okay. Um, if you see the network part, I have kept it for fast 3G right now, just to show you the loader because I don't have that heavy components to show the loading. Okay. And I have kept uh, disabling the cache so that it doesn't store something in cache and, you know, go again for a call and then I can show the loader part. If you see the network call, there are a few things that is being loaded right now. Since I am on home page, there are a few things already in the network. If you see there's something bundle, which is the main part, right? Then I have something on Lodash. Okay? Lodash is being rendered at the home. I mean, getting the things from Lodash at the home page. Then I have something called a books chunk. Remember when I said that I'm loading uh, everything that is being required by books as a, as a page, entire page, not as a component, as a page, okay? At the time I load my home page. So that's one of them. Now you see there is one jQuery as well. I've been loading it at the home page already. Yeah? Um, Familiarities with jQuery or, okay. So um, suppose that you have some requirement of jQuery that, or maybe some third party API called data fetch that you need. I just kept it here so that I can use it later, right? It's just like you order your food, you kept, kept in your fridge and then you can need it later, right? Um, and let's go to, first I'll show you how this books page looks like, okay? I'll go to books now. And this is, a, let me just, it didn't show any loader. If you, if you have seen, there was no loader, right? And the entire component got pasted then and there, right? There was no loader. So that's one of the benefits of preloading your books thingy. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to products once again. Loading, loading, right? Because the picture was heavy and I kept it on fast which is just to show you the loader, but that's how it looks like without your preloading or prefetching techniques, okay? Now, as uh, I also mentioned one thing, right? Uh, let me clear these network apps. Uh, higher. I said that the moment I hover on article, I can fetch the details which article might be needing, right? So let's hover. Okay, and where is the code? Let me, let me, you see? There is a call. I did not click it. Article page is still not loaded. I just hover on that and I could get some required things that I need at the time of hover. Okay. Now uh, let's go back. Now article doesn't show loader at all. Like books, it's just a different approach, right? It's loaded then and there. So that's how I removed the loading mechanism, which was, you know, hampering everything in the app by preloading and pre -pitch. Now let's have a look at the code. Before we move to the code part, uh, there are three major things that we need to look into. First is how we achieve the removing of loader for books component, what actually we preloaded, okay? Second, for your article page, there was something, a call going on the hover action that has been preloaded in some different way. There was a jQuery being loaded at the home page already, which is, which is being used by the article page actually, okay? That you can write a code according. Uh, as you can see the data structure, which it's visible at the back, right? All, yeah, okay. So if you see the data structure, that's, uh, I mean the folder structure, that's how we have, we have some components. We have a spinner that you see on the product space because other two are already preloaded and prefetched. Uh, and the major thing is to look around this. This is actually a suspense-based routing. How we utilize suspense with the routing part. Everyone does suspense with the components. It's been done with the routing here. So let me go to one of the data page. Moment. Okay. So you, you remember that fallback, fallback UI, where we can see the fallback here on line number? 
19 is it 19 or what yeah here right 90 we have spinner so that's a fallback you could see on products page not on some other ones and if you see my routes are actually wrapped in your suspects right and if you remember the first statement that under suspense any child goes for the closest parent so here my closest is this one suspense only one suspense i have you can have multiple as well see i wanted to keep it simple that's why this is this is how it looks like you can keep it more in a, a descriptive way so what i say if you go to books you uh, lazy route uh, for books there is something called uh, lazy route for books or lazy route for blah 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 right so what it is actually and um, yeah let's let's also see this one use effect anyone had use effect used use effect everybody right so what is what does it do at the time of rendering of a page or a component you want to run something at the first time at the first go so let's see i am doing something preloading for my books component here so that's how my preloaded things are being done we'll go, go into the function implementation as well right now and just briefing it out and there was one jquery which is being loaded in the home page that's here on the next line which is being loaded so these are the few things i preloaded or prefetched right to make things easier for me in the later future and uh, i'll show you this part so this is a bit uh, utility file i kept for me so that i can reuse it in some other pages or components okay I am doing the lazy route for my books, for my products, and for my articles. And if you see this factory function over here, and uh, what are we actually doing? We are doing your component import. This is nothing but whatever you pass to me, like import, brackets, double quotes, the path, I'll get it imported. Okay. And uh, there's something called window location and reload. I would like to read, uh, I would like you to read about it if you don't know it, but I'll not explain it here. It's just like a maybe, uh, I don't know, food for brain for you for later. Okay, you can read about it. So that's how we are preloading at the time the home page loads for books and for a jQuery part. Now, how come I can load some things maybe for the articles page when I hover on that? So let's go to the article page. Okay. So um, let's let's go to home page first. Uh, do you see this condition which i said if href is articles you go and preload for the articles part right there we were using use effect directly like without any condition you just render your home page you get your books page in advance the entire js file for it the entire js junk right chunk. and here i have a conditional uh, thingy that if it is true do that that you can also do. So the three things that I mentioned, one is all over action, like over and conditional. So this is the one. You can do it the time you use effect, uh, do your use effect, you can do that. And uh, one thing more, let's also see the products page. So that's a very simple one. It's being getting your data from uh, JSON file, the products JSON file which is having your name, ID, images, and blah, 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 descriptions, okay? And uh, this is the one which says, I have something called my loader for the loader that, there are two loaders if you uh, if you have seen on the product page. One was the entire page covering the entire page. The other one was for the images part only, right? So this product page says, if you do not get anything, uh, just load this my loader. So the grade part area that you are able to see on the images when it is being loaded, that's the one. And also you can do one more thing with this. So, um, Suspense you can use for component fallback UI. So this is a component here. You can use your uh, suspense as well, here as well. I have not used it. I have used the image tag, which provides me with a loader. So you can have the suspense over here as well, okay? But yes, that's a problem area which we saw, like multiple loaders and all. So we can do prefetching, preloading for products as well, right? And I can show you the article page. So this has been the load script, which we loaded at the home page. I can utilize it here on the article page. I have not, I have not um, you know, <laughs> aggressively used it for now. It's just like I pull it out of the cache and then load it here. And I would like to show you one more thing, just uh, this one. 
So if you can see the timings, right? I mean, the time at which it is being pulled up, it's it's very small as compared to your uh, product page and all. So I can maybe show you this. So if you see, everything is being loaded, like your image part, these images are being loaded, right? It is taking 1.5 at 1.71 seconds, right? Other one was milliseconds part. And also, um, I mean, because uh, just again, I'm mentioning, I'm on fast 3G right now, just to show you if you are using your phone, which is having a lower bandwidth than that, that would be a case. Yeah, so that's how a suspense on the client side rendering can be uh, utilized and we can reduce the renders. Uh, loaders are good, but for a limited time, not for all the time, right? And over to Jyoti, and now we'll have the interesting talk, the similar one on suspense, but with server side. Okay, so uh, sorry for the delay. Um, let's quickly start with SSR streaming with suspense. Um, Basically, it will talk here. We will talk about how we can enhance the performance again and how we can improve the user experience. I would like to firstly ask um, how many of you folks are aware of server side rendering? More, more, more. Okay, a couple of folks have aware of that. Uh, my second question is how many folks have used actually the SSR applications? Okay, we have a little bit experience, but yes, we have few folks. So I, I will quickly uh, talk about the, uh, firstly, the SSR rendering uh, to let you folks aware of that, um, how it actually approach and work. Um, so the very first part is you can see on the image, right? Um, user request a site firstly. So what will happen? Server is responsible to send you the HTML. That HTML needs to be pre-populated with all the data, data over there. So there is a data fetching is going to happen firstly, and then there will be a HTML generation going to happen. And then that HTML is going to be sent as, uh, as a response to the browser. And the browser is going to take that up. And uh, But that HTML is still in, uh, not interactive at the server side, right? uh, on, on the client side. right? So browser is going to download the JS and browser is going to execute that. So we talk about a little bit uh, about the hydration as well, right? In the last previous talk, right? So there's a hydration process gonna happen at the browser level, and then your application is gonna be fully interactive, right? 
So this whole process comes in picture, then the user is going to access the application and do some interaction with that. Okay, so any thoughts about this approach that we had just discussed? Is it optimal? Is it async? Any shout outs? Yes, no. So the answer would be no. Uh, it would be is it will be a synchronous, right? Because you see all the steps are executing line by line. Firstly, you need all the data. You are creating the HTML. You are passing it to the client, right? And doing all the process synchronously. So that this uh, I would say traditional SSR. Okay, this process the entire HTML response synchronously, and this can lead to your long server response time as well especially for the large application. And this is a big challenge, right? If 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 you see the real-time application, there would be a lot of data. There's a lot of complexities over there. So here, uh, you can get some understanding on this picture, OK? Uh, there is uh, fetching the data on the server. There is an A mark duration. This, this much time is going to take. And there would be a B duration where you are populating your HTML. Again, that is all on the server. End. Then server is gonna start sending your response that that we generally used to say in the web vitals TTFV time to the first byte. Okay. After the client's gonna receive that, there is a C duration that you can see, which is getting the JS on the client side. Okay. And then the hydration process. And the whole time you you will able to receive the TTF, the time to get interactive. So here we see the problems with the SSR today. You have to fetch everything before you can show anything on the client side. So you will see a blank screen. You have to load everything before you can hydrate anything. Again, you can hydrate only on the JS part, okay? And you have to hydrate everything before you can interact with anything, right? So these are the issues. Okay, so um, I have taken a basic demonstration app. Um, this is uh, this is executed using the traditional SSR implementation. Here's, here you see a couple of components that we have created. I just want to uh, get you folks aware of that application. The cars component, sidebar component, head of component, and the footer. Okay. And uh, the server side is basically on the Node.js uh, that, that I've created, uh, and that is using the React application. And you can assume here, this cars component is going to take the two second at least to data fetching, OK? So for uh, so there would be a two second delay is going to happen at the server side. And then only there would be HTML creation is going to take place. So I have, uh, I have collected some of the SSR metrics. Uh, I would like you folks to remember some of the vital points over here. You can, uh, basically we are trying to emphasize majorly on the first contentful paint. So what is the first contentful, contentful paint is, uh, once you get the HTML, you are able to see something on the screen, even a, a loader, I would say, okay? So here you can see the FCP is the 2.2 second and, uh, you can also consider the large content full paint uh, for this use case. It is currently the 2.2 millisecond uh, second. And this is the time frame screening of the application for us. You can see a couple of frames which are currently blank. And then you are able to see your components, sidebar, cards, header, footer, and everything. And probably after some time, it will be interactive as well. This is not a good user experience, right? And you can see a long time blank screen. Another one metrics uh, that you can think of is um, uh, waiting for the server response. So again, uh, uh, I'm not sure people would be able to see the time that green uh, bar. It will it is taking two point uh, two point zero one second. Okay, uh, to get the first byte from the server. Okay, so React 18 onwards, uh, there's a lot of improvements happen on the suspense side. Uh, we're gonna talk about the two majors one and how it changed the world for us, for the SSR. Streaming HTML on the server side, 
that's a very first one uh you can think of uh, going for lunch and dinner and uh, probably you will plan firstly your starters then your main course what will happen if uh, you you're going to get everything at a first point right you probably need something progressively progressive way right firstly you want to explore some starters enjoy it then go for the main course right so similar thing is being introduced uh, at the server side so the very first image uh, you can see the basic ssr that that is currently how it's happening right where you are getting one html over here but now from the server side uh, in the uh, latest in the react 18 onwards you can see a support of the html streaming uh, at the server side where it creates a chunk of the HTMLs and it's going to serve to the client. Okay. Benefits, faster TTFB, faster FCP. Okay. So I take again one snippet of my application uh, just to folks uh, uh, quickly walk through that. Uh, here we talk about the suspense a lot, right? Um, and you can see a couple of suspense boundaries that we have in our example. So we have a sidebar. Uh, there is a, a cars component, cars detail component, and photo component. This is wrapped inside your suspense boundary. And we, we understood right till now uh, how the suspense works, how the fallback is going to work. Okay. So uh, the the top one that, that you can see this one. Uh, the whole one. This is the very first shell of the HTML that is gonna serve, uh, that's gonna be uh, sent from the server side to the client in the very first request. Okay, and what it will done is it will send all the susp uh, all the suspense boundaries with the fall fallbacks. Okay, give me a second. Okay, so the first HTML shell is served to the client using the suspense fallbacks, and you can imagine here. Uh, you will get something in the very early phase uh, from the server side and let allow the client to do something on it. Okay, so um, I will quickly uh, show, talk about the second major improvement that we ha that has been done on the suspense on the React team. Uh, that is the selective hydration. Okay, so besides of the... Um, uh, rendering uh, the React component tree, it takes a lot of time. Apart from that, what the another thing is, React always hydrate the HTML synchronously. Okay, what does that mean is, uh, firstly, it will get the load JS and do the hydration process. Now, what's going to happen is, uh, all the smaller components going to wait for some time that, yeah, there's some large components going to resolve firstly, then only the hydration pro process is going to start. Okay, so now that that thing is also become asynchronous always. So there's a one more concept of the concurrent rendering is being introduced uh, in the React 18 onwards, and that helps us to interact your application even when there is HTML streaming is going on. So you can interact with other place in your application. Uh, so uh, yeah, so uh, it talks about if it, if I talk about the benefit. Um, the critical part of the application becomes interactive much sooner and it eventually enhances the overall user experience. Okay. We will see our one demonstration where you will, you would be able to relate more. Okay. Cool. So um, from the implementation side, what are the things that we can consume to achieve these two major, uh, these two major features? Yeah. So the first one is the usage of the uh, suspense and the lazy. So we have already seen the um, implementation of the suspense. Uh, we will see for the lazy as well and how we can achieve the streaming uh, of the HTML with the suspense boundaries. Okay. Uh, so uh, moving to the demonstration, uh, just give me a second.
Okay. So here you can see uh, a basic Node.js server I, I have just set up. Uh, there's nothing fancy over here. What I would like to uh, you folks to focus more on how we are uh, creating the HTML streaming and how we are uh, basically serving the React application and doing all the processes. Uh, so if you take a look on this app.get where we are actually responding to the client side, you can see here, uh, there's one stream that we have created, okay? So there is a new API that is being uh, the React server API that we are consuming is the React DOM server dot render to the pipeable stream. Inside it, what we are doing is we are providing the server site generated HTML. Okay. And uh, you can think of this one that we are providing some CSS JS uh, setup over here as a prop. Okay. And that is being calculated somewhere outside in the world. We, we don't need to focus on that, part, which, which is fine. Uh, we are passing here the bootstrap script that we have just created before executing this uh, this code. And there is one callback. Okay, so here you can see on shell ready. Uh, what does it mean uh, when it's gonna execute? So when you get the request from the client side, okay, uh, this, go this callback is gonna execute when your first shell of the HTML is already executed or created, okay? So inside it, if you see, uh, we are sending the status code based on some error. So, uh, so there's a there's a very basic error handling handling you can see over here. We are setting the header, and we are providing some piping on the response. Okay. Second one is their on error callback. Again, uh, that's a very uh, basic one that I create created for the demonstration but uh, you can put any business business logic based on your requirement over here. Moving on to the app SSR, what it actually doing, how it's gonna create the HTML. If I go over here. So here we are creating the HTML, okay? And here we are injecting our React app root component, okay? So uh, I'll quickly show you that one as well. And here um, we just see this snippet, right? We have created some of the some example of the suspense boundaries. I have taken header component out of it. That means header component is going to be available outside your first shell. Then uh, you can see the HTML we are serving over here. If I go to the, uh, for example, sidebar component, so we are using here lazy uh, and for the mock purpose, I just added some delay over here, okay? And then it is gonna serve your JS file for that. And you're getting your sidebar, sidebar JS component after one second. And similarly for uh, the cast component, I have put a delay of the two seconds that we have just discussed, car details component and the header component, okay? And we just discussed about the fallback as well in the suspense. So I have provided some of the fallbacks here, uh, loading sidebar screen, loading card detail screen, loading screen, and loading footer screen, okay? So um, let me start the application. So I firstly create the build of my React application, and then I'm going to start my server side so, uh, start server. Okay, let me go to the application. Okay, let me open the inspect. Okay, so, so at the very first time when I load my application, you can see here two loader bars, which are surrounded by the suspense boundaries, okay? 
um i'll quickly show you the you uh, the request so here you see the server side serves you the html first shell of the html with three loaders and with headers data what uh, like for example we have populated some of the uh, uh, mock text over here and these loaders is going to resolve in the same stream what does it mean so basically there is inline scripting tags is being created under the hood of the react which is going to populate your placeholders that is being provided by this stm okay so it's going to replace your previous loaders at the same place cool uh, if i talk about the waiting time for the server so you can see here impactful difference what we have seen previously so initially it was 2.01 second waiting from the server side and now you can see here waiting of the server responses very less 33 milliseconds right i'll show you the other metrics as well um, Okay, here it is. So uh, I capture a few of them from the Lighthouse reports as well. You can see a first contentful paint, 0 0.3 second. The largest contentful paint is your 0 0.5 second. SSR metrics uh, with HTML streaming. So, okay. So here you can see a good user experience, right? Uh, where you can see the blank screen for a negligible time. And user would be able to see something on your application. What about the second part? Uh, okay, this one we have just seen. Uh, this is your uh, waiting time for the server. What about the second point, selective hydration? User would be able to interact with your application in two scenarios. The very first one, all the HTML still not streamed. And the second one, all the JS is not downloaded yet still user still the browser is gonna hydrate your some amount of html that is already available okay i'll quickly show you the video so loading cards is still in place but you can click on your sidebar components yeah so uh basically we are trying to achieve here less time of interaction for the user in our application, right? Cool, um, I put some references over here and that's our time. Thank you all. Yes, please. Yeah. So, uh, Actually, I got your point, uh, what you are uh, trying to mention. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, SSR use case, you are trying to place it over here that we should serve something from the SSR where there is a less interactivity. Is, is that the correct one that you're saying, trying to say, right? Yeah, I think that's the right use case of the SSR. Uh, what we are trying to achieve here is what are the problems with the SSR existing one that we had and what we have improved over there, right? I think that is a totally different discussion where to use CSR and SSR, right? Yeah. So these are the major, I would say, the improvements that have done in the SSR and people have faced these issues in the SSR. 
because we are really uh, we are living in not in the idle world right there are some use cases where the ssi has been consumed at many places for example if i take of the e-commerce 